Hello, let's continue with the tutorials of custom controls in Windows form. This time we will make this flat button with a customizable border radius, thus obtaining a button with rounded corners, in the shape of a pill, or a normal rectangular button. Normally in Windows form, round buttons have poor image quality on the border radius, so I applied a little trick to get a rounded button with good finish quality. Well, let's start with the tutorial. First, we will add a new class for the custom button, you can put the name you want. We import the Windows Forms library to use the conventional Windows controls, and we also import the drawing library. We convert to a public class and inherit from the button control from the Windows Form library. Well, now we are going to declare fields for appearance and assign their default values. For example, the border size, border radius, and border color. In the constructor, we initialize some properties of the button for the default appearance. For example, a flat style and borderless with the specific size, background color, and text color. They can set any other property they want, such as an icon, text and image alignment. Next, we will declare a private method to get the graphics path for the button shape with customizable border radius. We create a graphics path object. We start the figure of the path. We add an arc on the initial axis of the rectangle of size equal to the radius, starting at an angle of 180 degrees with a range of travel of 90 degrees. In the same way, we add another arc in the upper right corner, starting at an angle of 270 degrees with the range of 90 degrees. We keep adding another arc in the lower right corner, starting at a zero degree angle with the 90 degree range. Finally, we add the last arc in the lower left corner to close the button shape, starting at a 90 degree angle with the 90 degree range. We finalize the figure, and return the graphics path. Ok, now we will override the button paint event to extend the functionality. First we set the smoothing mode of the paint event to anti-alias. We create a floating value rectangle object for the outer surface of the button. We create a second rectangle of smaller dimension for the border of the button. Well, if the border radius is greater than 2, then it will be a button with rounded corners. Otherwise, it will be a normal square button. On the round button, using the using statement we create a graphics path object for the button surface using the get figure path method. This method requires two parameters, a rectangle and a value for the radius. Then we send the surface rectangle created earlier in the border radius field. In the same way, we create another graphics path object for the button border, 
As parameters we send the border rectangle and the border radius field by subtracting 1. Now we create a pen object for the surface of the button, of the same background color of its container, with a thickness of 2. In the same way, we create another pen object for the button border, with the border color and border size defined. That's the four objects needed for the rounded button. It is worth mentioning that the using statement allows you to dispose of the objects correctly. Continuing, we set the border pen alignment to inset. We set a new region for the button defined on the surface graphics path object. Now we will draw the border of the surface for a good quality of the button using the objects created earlier. In the same way, we will draw the border of the button, however, the border will only be drawn when the border size is greater than 1. Well, and that's it for drawing the rounded button. These two lines of code are for the button surface, and the latter for the button border. Now, making a traditional square button is much easier. First we set the region of the button with the default dimensions. We can use the values set in the rectangle object on the surface. Now we will draw the border of the button, as long as the border size is greater than or equal to 1. To do this we create a pen object and draw a rectangle. Right, that's it for the button drawing. If you notice something is missing or there is a problem, you can adjust the values or add it. Continuing, we'll override the handle created event. This event is the most similar to the load event of the form or user control. It is executed when the handle of the control is created. We will use this event to fix the following issue. To have a good result, the border of the surface is drawn with the same color as its container. Therefore, if the container form changes its background color, the border of the surface will become visible, leaving a bad impression. To solve the problem we must detect if the form or control container changes back color. For this we will subscribe the back color changed event of the container parent. Here we simply redraw the button to update the appearance. Adding this condition is optional. If you need to change the background color of the container parent and update the button's appearance at runtime, you can remove the condition. Well, that would be it for the appearance of the button. To test the control it is necessary to build the project to save the changes. We open the toolbox, we scroll up, and there we will find the custom controls of the project. Works correctly. However, the button still lacks properties to be able to customize the appearance in our own way, for example, change the radius of the border. To do this we simply have to expose the fields as properties. We select the fields, right click. We select quick actions and refactorings, and we select encapsulate fields. This is the fastest way to generate properties. Well, 
Every time a value is assigned to the property we are going to redraw the button to update the appearance. I will add two other properties to change the background and text color. This is optional, I do it to have a quick access to these properties. We can group these properties in a category, they can put the name they want. There is no need to redraw the button in these two properties as it is not something new. We build the project to save the changes. Excellent, it works properly. However, there is still a downside. If the border radius is greater than the height of the button, the button will deform since it is not possible to draw a larger arc in smaller dimensions. To solve the problem we must add a condition in the border radius property. If the value is less than or equal to the height of the button, we will normally assign the value. Otherwise, the radius border will be equal to the height of the button, that is, the maximum value of the radius is the same as the height of the button. It will also be necessary to detect this condition when the button changes size. To do this, in the constructor we will subscribe the resize event of the button. Here, if the border radius is greater than the height, the radius border will be equal to the height of the button. Okay, now you have a constraint to set the border radius. In the same way, if we reduce the height of the button, the border radius is set to the same proportion of the height in case the radius is greater. Well that's it in this tutorial, I hope you liked it and it helped you. Goodbye and until the next video.